Have you ever heard of a Diophantine equation? Diophantine equations are equations, except they can only have integers as their solutions. So it's not like your trad traditional equation, which could have fractions or other irrational values as their solutions. Let's explore some examples of Diophantine equations in action. A common type of Diophantine equation are digit problems. Let's take a look at some digit problems in Diophantine equations. The digits of a two-digit number with tens digit 7 is reversed. The digits of a three-digit number with hundreds digit 3 and tens digit 5 is also reversed. The sum of both the new and reverse numbers is 288 more than the sum of the original two numbers. Find the sum of the original two numbers. So we don't know what the unit digit of both the numbers are. So let's call them A and B. So these are our two numbers, 7A and 35B. Two digit, three digit. But these are the original numbers. These are the reverse numbers, A, 7, and B, 5, 3. So, we're given that the sum of both of the new reverse numbers is 288 more than the sum of the original two numbers. So we have B53 plus A7 is 288 more than the sum of these two numbers. Okay, so let's see. This, what is the sum? What is the two digit number expressed algebraically? 10A plus 7. What about the three digit number expressed algebraically? That's 100B plus 50 plus 3, or we can just combine this 100B plus 50, 3. So these are the reverse number sums. And if we're given that, it's going to be 288 more than the sum of the original two numbers, which is 7, 7A, which is 70 plus A plus, that, that's the two-digit number, plus the three-digit number, which is 300, plus 50, plus A, or just 350 plus A. And now let's just simplify this. There's a lot going on, a lot of constants we can cancel. We've got 10A plus 100B plus 60, right, 53 plus 7, equals 288, plus 420, which is 70 plus 350, plus, sorry, this should be B, A plus B, right? So we can subtract 60 from both sides, and now 360 plus 288, 648. So this is going to be 648, as you can see here. And th that's all for this part over here. So now what we can do is subtract A and B from both sides. We get 9A plus 99B equals 648. And now this right here is a Diophantine equation. Why? Sure, it's an equation. But the key thing here is that A and B, they're digits, so they have to be integers. That's the key. The thing is, we only have one equation with two variables. And if we had normal equations, that would be a big bad thing. But we have one special condition here, that A and B are integers. And that's where the name Diophantine comes from. So to solve this, let's divide the whole equation by 9. You get A plus 11B equal to 73. 648 divided by 9 is 630 divided by 9, which is 70, plus 18 divided by 9, which is 2, so 72. So we have A plus 11B equal to 72. And now, remember, they must be integers. And not just any integers, integers from 0 to 9, because they're digits, right? A and B are digits. So that means the maximum possible value is 9, which means that this term has to be at least 63, right? Because if it's 
If it's less than 63, then A will have to be a number bigger than 9, which is not possible. So if 11B is at least 63, what are the multiples of 11 that are more than 63? 66, 77, 88, so on. But it can't be 77, can it? Because that's bigger than 72. And same thing for 88 than anything else. So it has to be the one and only 66. And that forces A to be 6. So the sum is 72. So A equals 6 and B equals 6 as well. Right? So from here, now all we have to do is solve, is plug it in back to the numbers and sum the original numbers. And so let's just do that. We have 76 for A, 356 for B. We add them up. We get 432. And if you wanted to, you could check that these do indeed satisfy the conditions. Right, because A and B are 6 and 6. So the sum of the original two numbers, 432. Nice, so let's move on. And here are quadratic factorizations. Difference of squares. x squared minus y squared is x minus y, x plus y. And here are some useful binomial x squared expansions. Now the main ones you need to memorize are these ones here. Let me box the important ones. The other ones are also helpful, but they're less important. So the main thing is x plus y squared equals x squared plus 2xy plus y squared and x minus y squared equals x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. And we can also rewrite them in terms of each other because they differ by 4xy. And these other ones you can check out in the book, Mastering AMC8 book, but for now we're going to move on to more important concepts. How many factors does the number 9984 have? Now, if you remember from the factors video, we learned a trick for calculating this with prime factorization. The thing is, though, this is a big, big number, and finding its prime factorization would be a, would be very difficult, not easy in the slightest. So, there's a cool trick we can use. 9984, any, anything you notice about it. Whenever you're stuck to try and make observations, look for patterns, right? That's what we're trying to do. Math is really, math problems are really like a puzzle that you, each step of the way you're solving each observation you make. 9984, hmm. It's super, super close to 10,000. Really, really close, isn't it, right? I mean, 99. Nine. Well, does that mean something? I mean, it can be expressed in the form 10,000 minus 16. Now, well, you should try and pause the video and think about this. What does this mean? Is this, this means something very significant and just try and see if you can notice it, notice anything special about this. And I recommend you pause the video because this is a very crucial observation here. Okay, so now that you're back, what, what's super special about this? This is 10,000 is 100 squared, 16 is four squared. And this is difference of squares. Wow, isn't that great? And that's a common trick you should always be looking for. For large numbers like this, look for difference of squares. It helps a lot. So 100 squared minus 4 squared, we can factor this as 100 minus 4 times 100 plus 4. And that's just 96 times 104. Aha! And fact, finding the prime factorization of both of these numbers isn't going to be too hard. I mean, at least compared to 9984, if you ask me. So 96 is, well, it's 16 times 6, or 32 times 3. And 32 is 2 to the power of 5. So 2 to the, two to the 5 times 3. 104 is 8 times 13. Let's move to the other side. And 104 is 8 times 13. And 8 is, of course, just 2 cubed. So 2 cubes times 13, that is 104. So their product is going to be 2 to the 8 times 3 times 13. So how many factors does this have? We can just use the factor trick now. We add one to all the exponents and multiply. 9 times 2 times 2, 36 is going to be our final answer for this problem. Cool. So the key idea here, looking for the difference of squares. 
hey, this is a cool algebraic number theory problem. By the way, you can check out all of these written examples that you see here, me scrolling past with the solutions. You can check all those out in the description. There's a Mastering AMC 8 book. It's completely free. You should definitely give, check that out. Each of the points A, B, C, D, and E, F all represent a different digit from 1 to 6. Each of the five lines shown passes through some of these points. These digits along each line are added to produce five sums, one for each line. The total of the five sums is 47. What is B? Oh, wow, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Five sums. Let's write each of these sums that they're saying, one for each line. And thankfully, I've got a bunch of colors, so we're going to color code it. So let's use a different, let's make it a bit thicker. So we've got a thick pencil now. This line right here, A plus B plus C. Right? And each, each is a different digit from one to six. A plus B plus C. Now we can use this line. A plus F plus E. And how about this line? B plus F. And let's even do this line over here. D plus D plus E. And we've got one line left, and that is this line over here, B plus D. And we're given that the total sum of, of all of these, the total sum of the five sums is 47. So these add up to 47. So what is the total sum? A, A, 2A, B, 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 3B, C, C, 2C, D, D, 2D, E, E, 2E, F, F, 2F. And this, we can just make sure a quick sanity check. 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2. The total sum of that is 13. And as you can see here, there are indeed 13 variables, just to make sure we didn't forget any. And we're given that this is equal to 47. Hmm. Okay, notice here. Even, 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 and then the only odd coefficient. And the sum is odd. So notice how we can write this as 2 times a plus c plus d plus e plus f and then plus 3b. Or rather, let's even write this further. 2 times a plus b plus c plus d and then plus b. This is equal to 47. This part is even, so b must be odd, right? Again, diophantine equations. We can't have like 1.6 as b. There are integers, a different digit. There are integers from 1 to 6. So already now we've narrowed it down to 1, 3, or 5. We already cut our options in half. OK, any other conditions we have in the problem? The digit condition is the main one. And each of the five lines pass through some of these points. They produce five sums, one for each line, right? And the total is 47. So how do we figure out what digit? Each one is a different digit. That's the key here. Each one is a different digit from one to six. So let's take each of these cases separately. Or first of all, do we even need to do that? So one, one of A, B, C, D, E, or F, they match up to one, two, three, four, five, six in some order, right? Because each of them is a different digit from one to six, right? Each of these digits matches up in some order. We don't know what, A could be 3, B could be 2, C could be 1, D could be 4, E could be 6, F could be 5. 
It could be anything. It could, but the thing we do know is that each number has, each digit has a different number, as you can see, and they match up. Each one of these different digits is different. But notice here, we've got a sum, a plus b plus c plus d plus e plus f. But we know the values of a, b, c, d, e, f in some order. We don't know each individual variable, but we know that one of a is one, one of b is, one of the variables is two, one of the variables is three, one of the variables is four, five, and six. So therefore the sum, try to figure it out if you, if you can, but the sum is just going to be one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six. Because no matter what, each one of these variables will be a different number from one to six. And then this is plus b. And guess what? Now, this is a one variable equation instead of a seven variable equation. That's a pretty big reduction, or six variable equation. And one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six, you can use the sum of numbers formula. You can add it manually if you don't know that. But the sum of numbers formula, six times seven by two, that's 21. So two times 21 plus B equals 47. B is five. That's our answer. Cool. And there's some more advanced factorizations you can check out in the book, but they aren't really needed that much for AMC8, more for higher competitions like math counts or AMC10, 12. But you can check them out in the book if you're interested. They can be useful in some harder problems. But now we're going to move on to the next chapter on miscellaneous number theory. And these are the most random problems. Believe me, you're going to have to check it out. We've got a whole array of problems and examples set up for you next time. Check that out in this video right there.